I'm just making sure. Okay, we're on there. Now, um, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, that's why that's why I won't do anything until we we know for sure. But what he's doing is is awesome. That's a good way to get get attention. The petitions. We have a petition. Um, for, what is this one? The thirteenth district petition that we just posted. Yeah, it is uh, for any. Uh, it's to demand the investigation into the thirteenth judicial district. Yeah. So uh, if, if you haven't signed that, I signed it. A lot of other people are signing it. So if you haven't signed it. Um, yeah, we need all the signatures we can get because yeah. there is a. Do you know how many signatures it would take? Uh, no, we just not on we, that specific one. The more that we can get. Yeah. The more it's on it, the better chances yeah. it has. But we are petitioning the FBI in Washington. There's, you know, a lot of stuff that has come to light that uh, anything we do in Tennessee is pretty much well going to be shut down. Yeah. Now, they can show up and show out and do the right thing for a lot of families. It'd be a different story, but uh, they're not going to, you know, say admit yeah. they're wrong. We're gonna have to put them in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, uh, you know, I've been fighting at this. I've, let's see, days of twenty first, thirteen, thirty months and sixteen days. Uh, about twenty six of it, I was by myself. Facebook was the only, uh, place I could fight, and uh, I put a lot of pressure on a lot of people, named a lot of people, and the people I named are the ones involved. And I knew it since four days after he was killed. The law knows it was then. But you know, uh, I've had some people, I've watched comments and they say, you know, well, suicide is a, is a hard thing to accept. And it is, it really is. But you have to look well, at what is going on here specifically. Yeah, well, suicide, you know, uh, what I mean? you know the thing, I had had time from Friday night to Monday night. I made peace with it. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't like it, but I made peace with it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can't change what happened. And, you know, like I said, until I went in the embalming room and looked at the damage before they had worked on him. Uh, you know, I, up until that point, you know, uh, you know, I was asking myself, why did you have to do this? But after I looked at him, huh. you can't get the damage done to you hanging yourself that was done to him. I mean, it's impossible. Mm -mm. Now, I, I don't, I don't want to bring this up, but in, I'm in um, Aaron's group and you had a picture of him in his casket. And for me, you can, you can clearly see, you know, they did a really wonderful job, but to they me, did the best they could. Yeah. You can, you can see, you know, if it was a hanging to me, why would his eye be swollen? Cause you can clearly tell that there was there's just well, his, his right eye. Yeah. Uh he had a, you know, like I said, he had a cut that run from between his eyebrows or down all the way through his eyelid, past the corner of his right eye. It's about four and a half inches long. And then you it was as it was it was as straight as if it'd been cut, you know, with a scalpel. His eyeball was deflated. Uh, you can, you can his see. nose is broke. Yeah. Uh, there's a mark in the photo. If you look across his forehead, we can't, we don't know what it's from. I hadn't figured it out yet. He always wore a hat. I don't know yeah. if maybe it had yeah. something to do with the, with his hat. But uh, the I mean, his right wrist was broke. I was just going to say that I've broken both of my wrists. I actually have a... a two pins and a clamp in this one. And that's the first thing I notice is when, when 
when I looked at it was you could tell that it was. Well, see, there's a lot of things that we didn't notice, didn't you know, sense. till, you know, I guess after maybe I guess reality set in, uh, you know, that's when you sat down and we actually we were transferring the stuff, pictures and stuff out of my phone to my laptop. And my, my daughter was helping me. And that's when we, when we noticed the rest. But see, these injuries that you are you and I are talking about right now weren't listed on his autopsy. Yeah. Uh, they had his height, uh, his height on his autopsy report. He's six six. They had him at six two. He is two forty five. They had him at two oh eight. A lot of his yes, tattoos in, didn't have. You know, and I posted the pictures of of where the they left the rope and you like you said he was six six and you know she said that he was. Correct me if I you know he she tried to grab his legs. One of them got stuck. So wouldn't you think that it would be a little bit messier? You know, I know it was a shed, you know, and it was a mess in there, but it doesn't look like somebody was thrashing around, I guess I would say. Well, yeah, now in her statement, she said that he was pushing her, pushing him off with her feet and hands. Now, it, when your body is dying, uh, it's going to have nat natural twitches and stuff especially in your lower extremities because, mm -hmm. you know, the blood's stopping to pump. Uh, but you're not going to push. If you're pushing off with your hands and your feet, you're still coherent. Yeah. But when you hang yourself, I don't care if you mean to do it or not. It's a natural instinct to reach up and try to grab, pull that rope from around your neck. Oh, yeah. There were no scratches on his neck. There Those were no marks things. at all on his neck. They didn't <clears> even have to put makeup on his neck. It was, you know, where the right side of his, the left side mm -hmm. had a lot of swelling to it. Yeah, you can, yeah. You, well, you, you know, you saw the pictures of him. He, the boy we buried, don't even look like my child. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And the only, when I went in the embalming room, Uh, the only way I knew it was him. He had a stat tattoo of a star on his left ring finger. That's the only way I knew him. And this, uh, and this was supposed to be a, a suicide by hanging. Well, you know, and then when you stop that piece of rope that's hanging there, is approximately 47 inches long. From my estimate, the shed is roughly, it had to be bet between 15 and 16 feet. Where he supposedly stepped off and hung himself was 34 inches. Yeah. Just, and with his size and weight, he just stepped off that, it would have snapped his neck. He's just too big. Yeah, the the, and, and the, you know, the rope. And that's what I'm saying. Like he didn't snap his neck. So no, he didn't no. instantly die. No, the hot the hyoid bone was not broken. He didn't have batiki eye. He didn't have a swollen tongue. He had nothing. And the question I just keep coming back to for her for the girlfriend on again off again girlfriend is that is so much time even even before he got into that position the climbing up the tying the the you know putting it around his neck all of it and then he didn't snap his neck so that was i'm not sure how long it takes somebody to strangle but i would assume at least a few minutes it and then was. all that time she did not go get help well now my understanding what we were told, the detective told us, was Karen and Aaron were the only ones there at the that's, house when it happened. Where, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about first. Okay. But then, in the, uh, it wasn't just a few minutes later, he said that Karen said she run in the house 
ask Erica to call 911. Erica told her to call 911 herself. So she took the cell phone, went back outside, and walked 100 yards. Now, she had done dial 911, walked 100 yards down the road, knocked on a trailer door. Hannah answered the door, and she throwed the phone at Hannah. She says, here, you talk to him. And that's when the first time the story changes. Yeah. Oh, they were Derek there. And Derek in the same, uh, Mr. S the detective, uh, he said, well, it was only Karen, Karen and Aaron there. And I said, no, wait a minute. I said, somewhere in here, I said, you told me that she went in the bathroom and got the cell phone from America. So, I mean, their stories just started Are falling apart yeah. instantly. Uh. Well, I can imagine the circumstances, it would be hard for everybody to keep a straight story. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got eight or nine people mm. that are complicit in killing somebody. And I'm not going to say 100% that they meant to kill him that day. Oh, 100%. Because I don't know. I don't I know. I believe that. that there may have been some people there that didn't know what they were getting themselves into that day and just happened to be there. Actually, I think there's just some people showed up to buy dope and yeah. while it was going on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I And now they're either scared or they don't want nothing to do with it or for whatever reason, nobody is wanting to talk. Well, the thing is, we're talking about community, that small communities uh, that where all the dealers know each other. When one dealer ain't got nothing, they know where to go and get something. So they're protecting their way to get high. It's yes. it's a circle. And yes. I mean, you know, it's somewhat like a gang, you know. They're going to, you know, circle the wagons and protect their highs. Because, you know, when you're, when you're an addict, I don't care what kind of addict you are, uh, you want, you're thinking about that next high. Before oh. you straighten all the way up, you're thinking about how to get high again. Well, if this one ain't got nothing, this one does. So they protect each other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a vicious circle. You know, if they spoke, that cuts off their source. Their supply. Exactly. And from what I understand, that is a major supply family. Oh, yes, it was. Well, see, <laughs> the thing with, uh, with Russell and them, Aaron had told me about them making what's called wasp dope. It's uh, where they take wall spray. I don't know. Uh, raid wall spray is what Aaron told me. They spray it on screen wire. It has to be the metal screen wire. And they'll shock it with jumper cables. It crystallizes. It looks like meth. It acts like meth. Mm -hmm. But some people, it shoots their body temperature so high they, they seize. And I've heard many people talking about them just sitting there watching people seizing the floor and not even bother to call 911. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And anytime, uh, you know, like I said, the, uh, they get only, dropped in the ditch or laid or down or and nobody yeah. wants you know, I mean, uh, Russell's ex wife, Becky, had a bad seizure out there. Uh, they didn't call, they didn't call 911 for her. No. And that was his wife. So, I mean, it's, I so, think they've been on the stuff so long. I'm not sure. I mean, real people they would corroborate a sound story if they, if they tried with all the. I don't think, you know, Karen, Erica, well, we'll go with Erica. Erica is the one that was supposed to have recorded them killing Aaron. Uh, she told several people that she did record it. And one of the girls actually outed her on Facebook and told her she recorded it. She's told a lot of people that, but she's hard. told that, that you are. yeah. She uh Erica told that Karen and Aaron had been down there doing pills and meth all day long. There wasn't but one problem with that. Hack had took Aaron over to his daddy that morning. 
he spent the whole day with his dad. So see there, I mean, they, I think they've done so much. They don't remember really what did happen or they don't want to. But yeah. now Crystal, she's told several people what happened. She what actually talked to a couple of girls on the phone is. while she was cleaning up the blood no and is. told them what she was doing. They are so confident in their selves that they don't think anybody will tell anything on them. And they've got away with a lot of stuff for a long time. Oh, they had to. Yeah. There's no I mean, way. Uh, and, you know, Crystal under indictment for uh, two counts of selling Subutech, which uh, she crossed the state line to get it. But they posted her bond at only $5,000. She was out of jail in 57 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it takes long on that generally to book somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, from, from my perspective, and here again, I'm not objective. Uh, I don't know how drug courts and all that stuff work. I've never experienced it. Uh, but these people, Russell, for instance, he's got caught with meth time after time after time. First offense, first offense. Uh, I always thought you had one first offense. But yeah. You know, some people obviously have more than one. I mean, some people, you know, there are people out there that do the first time get a slap on the wrist, but their second time they get it. You know, usually you would think that second time. Yeah. You but know, it, seems it's nuts. In this particular district, the druggies and the dealers, I mean, they're back on the street and, and quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you get get somebody goes into court up there with a, a driving on suspended or something. Now they do their time, but these druggies, mm -hmm. uh, they're back out on the street. And uh, now I have a theory. I could be wrong. Uh, if I'm wrong, then I'll admit it. You know, when somebody can show me, I am. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, great dealers pay their court cost. They pay well. And I think keeping these people on the street, it keeps uh, in, I, keeps the revenue flowing. Yeah. Every, every now and then they'll have yeah, one. They'll to be like able they're to. busted. And, uh, but these are only small. They're small fish. Uh, but it's not just the drugs. I mean, you've got child sex trafficking. Yeah. You've got gu uh, guns, stolen car parts. I mean, there's, it's just a lot of it moving out there around that particular house. And uh, it's been like that for decades. And you will never, ever get me to believe that it's, it's nobody sees it. It's oh. just the town secret. <laughs> oh, it ain't. No, it's never been a secret. Now, Turkey Town, even when I was growing up as a child, I grew up in the area. Mm. I knew about Turkey Town, but it was maybe like one of those sort of taboo places, you know, that you really didn't want, yeah. want to be. Oh, yeah. And as far as I know, there's never been no federal agents on that ridge. And I'd hate to, uh, to even imagine probably the bodies and stuff that's out there that, you know, People just went missing. They'd be, they'd be. There's no telling. I mean, the hollers, the caves, uh, the creeks. They have a. I, there's just, no telling what's there. They have a stake in it, and I think a lot of that is money. money I believe so too. Money, 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 money. So, money. Yeah. I, I believe that with all my heart because, uh, I knew it had changed because, like I said, I left in the late 80s yeah and uh it was still a decent it was a decent place there was drugs there oh, yeah. but they were confined to one area and in this instance i mean it, it, the meth is just all over the place yeah. and i heard recently they were selling heroin out there but they never even slowed down after aaron died now one of these people 
that called themselves friends, a couple of them kin to him. They didn't even come to his visitation or his funeral. Then they called me and threatened me that they was going to kill me if I didn't shut up and, let, uh, you know, leave it alone. I'm not shutting up. Sure. Bring your egg out. Now you're going to have an army with what? When I hopped on here, there was over a 9,000 reach. So we're, we're making, it's getting there. It you, is. Know, I, you know, I get where people will uh, say suicide's hard to accept. But you have to look at every, in, in exactly. this specific case, you know. You so Aaron's case, what is surrounding? Oh, uh, the one thing I can say is Aaron's case isn't the only one that's been I, read suicide I, that wasn't. I there, there have been six. There were six. Within well, like a five-mile radius, wasn't yes, it? Yes, six. Uh, and only one of them was 100% suicide. Dude had bought, got some dope from out there, went home, grabbed yes. his old lady by the hand at 3 o'clock in the morning, drug her out to the out of the bed, held her hand, walked to the front door and took a three fifty seven and put under his chin and blowed the top of his head off. This wasp dope, it's a whole whole different world. And when I first talked to the law about it, they actually thought I was crazy. I then know. they got a hold of some and questioned me. Well, they've been trying to play me as crazy anyway, which, but, you know, I mean, I've been my worse for better. Nations will do anything to increase profit and be able to sell more. Well, the thing about with them, with the wasp dope, it was where they could keep the good dope for themselves, yeah. mm -hmm. and they didn't care if they were killing other people. No, no. Uh, there was, a, I've been trying to get, I've got it somewhere a year before Aaron died, two years. There was a young boy from Jackson County, Tennessee. Uh, actually, his body was at the same funeral home as Aaron was. Uh that associated with the same people. He was found in Overton County and pretty much well the same circumstances ruled a suicide. And, you know, my thing is here, is there a way to profit from ruling things, suicide, uh, su ruling su cases, suicides, because there are so many of them that aren't. We have, you know, in the Tennessee dark hole, uh, Sarah's mom, I saw the crime scene photos to her. I knew her mom personally. There is no way on God's green earth she could have done what they said she done because of her stature. She's just too short. I mean, in the crime scene photos, she look, she's a twisted mangle. I mean, it's just, I mean, things that, uh, you know, like if you had somebody that's with a trained eye, things are just right. stuff that's apart. what I was gonna say. And sometimes, with a you know, with the first glance, it does seem that. And then sometimes, when you look and you add up all the pieces and the surrounding, yeah, you you see that every some things are just not what they seem. No, and the thing with irons with the rope that was supposed you know around his neck. It was hanging real loose when I, I saw the crime scene photos. And with the rope I have, which is 47 inches, they couldn't even have got to Aaron to have cut him down. They would have to climb up him to get him down, wouldn't they? <laughs> See, that's just it. There wow. was no ladder there, nothing. I have pictures of the location. There was no ladder. The only thing that could be climbed on was the rail he supposedly stepped off and then he had to climb up like 12 feet reach out another four or five feet with one while holding on to the pole with his left hand and reach out that far thread a rope through next to the tent around the beam and then tie it in a slip knot with one hand but that one hand was broke So, I mean, uh, you know, the damage to his face, if you well, look at it. Well, and then it's just what? they, And then, then 
the way everybody, there was three different stories given that night. Yes. For somebody who committed suicide, it, it would seem to me that they'd be with one. It's pretty de defi definite there, you know. Yeah, it's cut and dry. It was just them two by themselves. Then it was heard that a few of them up there have been fighting. Yep. And then they said they were having a party and just found him. Yeah. So which is it? Well, the one thing that absolutely there's proof to was that there was a fight in the kitchen. Rufus got his, Aaron knocked Rufus's front tooth out. Rufus does, in fact, not have that front tooth. So we know that's a fact. Uh, but, uh, I mean, there's just, there's just, and you know, the police officers never, ever went inside the house. They would have still smelled the bleach because time I got there on Tuesday, I could not stay in the house that long because of the burning of the, you know, it burnt my eyes and my nose. Uh, but, uh, and they never, well, this ever seen him hanging. He was in a curled up fetal position when they arrived laying on the ground. And then just made the assumption that all these people no, said he he done himself, so that's the way we're going to rule. The people said he'd done it. And, but, they, mm -hmm. but how do they know he'd yeah. done it if they wasn't there when it happened? Mm -hmm. I mean... And the They're one trampling all over their selves and contradicting. And the biggest thing is you have Overton County's attorney telling me that TBI had the case, uh, that I couldn't have none of the stuff to it because I wouldn't agree to close it, which I haven't. And then she says TBI has it. Well, when I speak to TBI, if TBI doesn't have it. While, uh, you know, the county's attorney, a sworn officer of the court, lied to me. <laughs> then uh, we called, I uh, actually managed to get a hold of the two TBI agents that were actually sent to the scene. When they got there, they were uh, asked to come by Bryant Dunaway. When they got there, they were told that there was a party. They'd come outside and found him. Uh, and, you know, that they were told the investigation was over, the interviews is over, uh, some dogs had damaged his face. Did they take it. anybody in for questioning that night? Uh, the only, uh, Karen was arrested at the scene because uh, her initial charge, now I don't know this, there was a lady saw there's, you know, the little things you see behind cash registers at convenience stores about who's been in jail or going yeah. to jail and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the morning, the next morning on Saturday morning, there was one that had Karen's face on it with a murder charge. I've never been able to find it, but they took her to jail as soon as they arrived on the scene. Uh, I was told that her and uh, a girl named Firecracker sat there and got high while they were killing Aaron. And uh, I was told that the rope that was on his neck, she put around his neck, scratched him and told him, you gone now, you son of a bitch. And... Uh, For what? Why, why Aaron, did you... Aaron was leaving her. He... He he loved her. Not, I mean, that's... in spite in spite of how bad she was on drugs. Now I'm not going to sit here and say Aaron didn't do drugs because he had done drugs, but drugs yeah never gave him what he wanted. Vodka did, and he had got where he had he got I to a place understand. where you know vodka wasn't it wasn't even about drinking anymore. He was move he was moving past it. He had, you know got past his demons. Yeah. What had what had bothered him. Yeah, very well. Uh but you know, he wasn't a choir boy and I'll never tell nobody he was. I was but, a choir girl. <laughs> he now Aaron what Aaron was uh very good hearted. Yeah. But 
doesn't like to see people pick on. He, he, he wouldn't let nobody mess with kids. Yeah. And you know when that when they ask him to uh, kidnap young girls out of Nashville about nine or ten years old, and he said no. I think that was. The I think thing. that's when things headed really far mm -hmm. south because one of the guys that asked him was a police officer. Because if you think the trying to stop the drug industry is bad, try stopping the uh, sex trafficking. Yeah, <laughs> Aaron. Aaron could never stand and watch anybody do something to a child that was wrong. I can't even imagine the explosive temper he would have had because of that. Oh, because you can you can look through his pictures. You can see a very big how he feels towards children. I'm, um, and I'm because really he asked me what to do. He oh, said, my. Mama, he said, what I do? I said, call the law. And that's when he informed me one of them was, and it's an Overton County Sheriff's deputy. I know his name. Aaron, say Aaron had filled me in on a lot yeah. of this stuff. Yeah, with, well, now, how many days before um, um, he was murdered that he came to? How many, how many days in between that was that? Okay, uh, the last time, well, now about the se the little girls, it'd probably been, he'd started talking to me about what was going on out there, like the end of December, okay. early January. Mm -hmm. But eight days before he died, we were talking. He turned he called up. called me from his daddy's cell phone. And uh, actually, uh, he was having to go back to, uh, East Tennessee, and I told him, I said, why don't you just stay, and I'll be in, we'll visit a little bit, and he said he had to get back, because I hadn't seen him in probably about five or six months. Yeah. And uh, he said, Mama, he said, I believe I've got into something I can't get out of. And uh, I said, well, just leave. And he told me, he said, I can't. I, he said, they won't let me, and I said, who? Because Aaron wasn't one to let somebody make him do something he didn't want to do. Yeah. He's strong-willed, independent. Mm -hmm. And when he said the cops, I said, oh, I thought to myself, oh, my God. And uh, he told me, you know, if something happened, he said, you call Overton County Sheriff's Department and ask for Detective Derek Sidwell. He'll tell you everything that's going on. And, uh, you know, I never was informed by the law, anybody in law enforcement, that Aaron was dead. I, I, I don't think they would have tried to have gotten a hold of me had it not been for Aaron's friend, Bo, that called me. Wow. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're just, they didn't do nothing like they're supposed to do it. His daddy was... Well, after they got the call, his dad was there within five minutes of getting a call that he was dead. He spent three and a half hours down there, and they did not ask him to ID him. Which is strange. Yeah. Uh, I've asked for my son's wallet. I still haven't got it. They said they would release it to me. That, But now that's the only way I get anything. I was going to say, they're not going to let you have nothing until you... Oh, no. no. They're, they're going to use anything that you want yeah. as leverage. Yeah. Or, or, or try to. Yeah. But I wouldn't... I'm, you know, if I... I have no... After I saw Aaron, the damage, I mean, his ear low earring ripped out of his ear... Uh, his face, you know, I didn't recognize my own son. I did not recognize him. And uh, you can't sustain that much damage from a hanging. And their crime scene photos, you could see where he had been wiped yeah. off the smear. Now we know they, we know he didn't go into the, they didn't go into the house. But from your understanding, or your, you know, from what you know, did they take besides of Besides the items that they took with them, did they like do any kind of DNA, like swap testing? Oh no, no. Any no. anything? No, no. Uh, there's it's a 
Now, my understanding in any crime scene that like that, they're supposed to it's supposed to be treated as a homicide. In which case, they will should have bagged Aaron's hands. Aaron's hands were. Aaron was a mechanic, body man. There wasn't nothing he couldn't do. So he could roof, hang sheetrock. There just wasn't nothing he couldn't do. And his hands, where he'd work on cars, were not. Sometimes, you know, where the grease or oil would get in the creases of your skin. His hands in the crime scene photos were cleaner than I'd ever seen them in his life. It was like they had been cleaned with bleach or something. Yeah. And then, well, you know, there was then, a fight, I would imagine he, he tried fighting, defending himself. Well, well, you know, the uh, mortician asked me, he said, you know, cause I asked him about his neck. I said, I'm his mom. I said, if there's marks there, you know, I wanted to know they were there. You know, because you know, as a parent, you always mm -hmm. sometimes you don't want to see things, but you have to. Yeah, and I realized that, and th I turned to him and I asked him, you know, I said, "Do you see any marks on this boy's neck?" He said, "No," and he said, "In my twenty-five years in this business, he said I've never seen nothing like this." He said, "But do you know if he was in a fight?" He said, "Because he looks like he." put up one hell of a fight. And I told him, you know, I said, you know, at that point, I didn't know. So, and I mean, like, a, and, you know, after we picked his stuff out, the calls started coming in that uh, they had killed him, giving me names of people to talk to. Their people contacted me. I didn't have a clue who they was. I mean, I, like I said, I've been gone since the 80s. I didn't know any of the police officers up there. I didn't know uh, hardly anybody up there anymore. Because, you know, most people moved away. And I'm sure they're up there thinking with you being so far away, it's going to be harder for you to get the attention. Well, I was distant, you know, to... to I'm sure it's hard, you know, being having to go... That takes gas, that takes... Being up there and being close to the, you know, the investigation and the people, you, you're further away. And I think that they they kind of rely on that, too. Well, first of all, there's not an investigation. There hasn't been one. They let me think there was for the first six months till the autopsy report come back. And uh, investigating. You know, yeah, they they. They made up, the, done, when Aaron was laying on the ground, they had done made up their mind what they were going to call it. It didn't matter what happened. It was going to be a suicide. That's just the way that was. Sure, that's what benefits them. Well, they, you know, well, you've got, I don't know if anybody's heard of the Lauren Agee case, but they, uh, what her mom went through is just crazy. And the what, abuse of power yeah. And it was also in the same district, uh, Lauren's mom uh, ended up having to sue the people that w was with her daughter when uh, when she died. It happened at Center Hill Lake, and uh, in order to she had to sue them civilly. That way, they had to get on the stand, give statements. Well, when they when it was all said and done, the judge ruled that all their statements were obviously not correct, that uh, evidence presented uh, was very, very weak. He tossed all of the evidence out, which meant that they, you know, they could destroy what they had. Ridiculous. Why and would they, you ever yeah. be allowed to destroy Evidence in a crime. I well, and, see, and then on top of once, and Miss and her mom appealed it to a higher court in Nashville. The higher court in Nashville ruled that ju the judge, his name is last name is Young. That's all I know. Uh, that it had uh, showed an abuse of power. Uh, uh, disregarded the actual law. 
and he was uh, chastised for having the evidence destroyed. And uh, but yet, this man is still practicing law. Oh, of course. Okay. And from what I from what I understand, you know, uh, Mr. Dunaway. Now I have. I will say, I spoke to the man twice. He spoke to me. Uh, with you know, he was nice. He was he was decent to me. Uh, now his ADA gore. That's a whole nother ball game. He uh, virtually, he told me. He says, well, actually, started out all right when we were discussing everything, and uh, of course, I had a lot of questions. He was trying to answer them. I'll give him that. But uh, I guess he got tired of the questions and and he just said look you have, haven't got any choice in accepting whatever i decide and i just said so you to say that yes. to a mother a, a parent of all people yeah. yeah and he said uh you know you ain't got no choice in accepting whatever i decide and you know at that point i was starting to lose my cool too i I told him, you know, we all got choices. I said, I told him, I said, I have one last question. He said, okay, uh, what is it? I said, what did the report on the rope say? He said, well, he said, there was no report on the rope. We don't do that in suicide. I said, so you decided it was a suicide before that boy's body ever left for Nashville while he was laying on the ground. And uh, I said, well, I'll tell you one. I said, I've got a recorded conversation between me and the detective, him stating that he was waiting on a five-page report on that rope, and he hung up on me. And so, you know, his office called a couple of times, won't talk to me. Uh, we wouldn't have talked. That's just the way that would have been because he had done, he'd done let his, he, he said to way too much. He said more than he should have. Yeah. And when you just hang up on somebody, you know, you caught them with their pants down, but, uh, you know, in the whole thing, I want my son's name cleared for his kids. Absolutely. I know yeah. anybody else, any other parent could look at their child they know what their child looks like. They know what their mental health is. If Aaron hung himself, then he did. Life, he hadn't had an easy life. There's no, no lie to tell about that. But he was strong, mentally and physically. You can tell, yeah. I just, and, uh, I didn't know Aaron, but from what I'm finding out, talking to you and, you know, learning, he just didn't strike me as, as, the type that well, would do that, no matter how he was feeling. Well, no, there was one, you know, the one thing these people had was he was married one time. He married a girl that was like five years younger than him, mm -hmm. and he was crazy over. They stayed together about a year, and she left him. And he tried, he tried to hang himself then. He was 21 years old. Okay. But he had moved through that. Yeah. And, he and was but the thing was, all these people knew that he had done it. It was nearly perfect if they hadn't have left the rope, if they at the scene, if they hadn't have left the liquor bottles and the bloody hat. I mean the hat was brand new yeah. when he got down there. It well, was I had the hat. This it's happened blood. on a Friday. You Friday, said? yes. And then you arrived on a Tuesday? Uh, yeah, uh, out there at the house. On Tuesday. Yeah, and that's when I found the hat. That were supposed to be his friends. The rope was still hanging, wasn't it? Yeah, for the whole and world just to go. It there. Yeah. But see, actually, a friend of mine had went down there on the 7th. Absolutely. Just, whether, regardless of what exactly. happened, you know, what they're saying what happened and what, what happened, for them to just leave. It just, oh, yeah, exactly. well, now, see, my thought about them leaving the rope was the upper portion. I sat and I thought, why on earth would you leave a 
an, as an important piece of physical evidence as that. Because and finally, it dawned on me. They left that piece of rope where if it ever showed up as evidence, it would cons be considered contaminated. And they knew Aaron's DNA ain't on the upper part of that rope. And if you look at that picture, anybody wants to zoom in on that picture of that rope. Yeah, on that she picture. has all of these pictures that we're talking about in her group. And it is in the comments. So if anybody wants to. If you look at it, the knot, that slip knot, never did tighten up. It never, the rope never actually tightened up against the beam. His weight would have tightened that so tight oh, you, you, you can think, get your fingers behind that rope. You can see shadow behind it. Do you think they, that he was ever even no on there to enough weight to tight? Uh, he, they couldn't get him up. They meant to hang him with everything. They meant to, but they underestimated his, his weight. And, uh, I mean, four or five people couldn't have got him lifted yeah. up high enough to have hung him. But like I said, there were no marks on his neck. Mm -hmm. And the upside down V that's always at the back of the neck and a hanging was not there. He didn't, again, no batechia. His arteries were fine. And the damage was to his face. Eight hours. And yeah, so but why do you leave a body? Lay on the ground eight the hours. On the it's a suicide. You could have taken him and continued with everything else if you really thought that it was a suicide. Now I have a theory. Uh, I was told he was drugged. Now there was uh, meth in his system, uh, alcohol. I was told that the meth level was high enough to have incapacitated him. So, you know, and I don't know what exact level that would be. Uh, but there's some, I do know there's some drugs that they can put in, uh, shoot you with. And after a certain amount of time, they, they dissipate. That's mm -hmm. the only thing I could come up with for letting him lay on the ground like that. For, for it to, yeah. Yeah, for it to dissipate. And, uh, I, I can't remember what they are, but I do know they exist. I mean, but, I would uh, imagine once the heart stop, everything stops, that it doesn't, it wouldn't continue to digest. Like, you know, but, what I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. But there, there are some drugs that can be put into a system that will only stay in there for like for like three or four hours. I don't know exactly what they are, which I do need to do some research and try to find out. But, uh, I mean, I would assume just with his, they either ganged up on him and beat him to oh, where he couldn't stand up, or they had to have given him something because he was a big well, guy. Yeah. <laughs> now, what I was told after, after him and Rufus and Russell got into it and he went to the front door. Uh, Hack had a hospital bed that set in a long picture window right in the front and of the Hack house. Hack now, isn't he? Uh, yes, Hack passed the day before my birthday. Uh, karma seems to be working pretty hard in that area. Yeah. and But I hate it. I do because... But it's, also, it's also a bad thing because there, if these people are dropping like flies, so does the truth. Well, the, uh, I mean, Hack was 82 years old. He okay. did have some health issues, but he also uh, used meth. He would shoot yeah. meth. Up. And, but now they said they'd done an autopsy on him. They said he had some broken bones and stuff. Now, this I don't know that he did. But, uh, you know, I didn't want my thing. I didn't want anybody else to die. I mean, my son ain't the first one that died at these people's hands. They're like a pack of dogs. One on one, they won't do nothing. But four or five of them together, you can get in trouble. And, uh, but anyway, they said Aaron went to the front door, asked Hack for his rent. He said, just give me my money. I'm going to go. Before, Daddy will be here in a few minutes. And Hack, I was told Hack laughed at him. Around what time it was that he got dropped off? 
Uh, he, uh, his dad said it was around 4.55 p.m. Uh, they got the call somewhere between 5.25 and 5.35 p.m. His daddy was actually done back in his truck to go get him when the call came in. And they called uh, Aaron's cousin, Bud, and told him that he is dead. Yes. And within five minutes, his dad was there. But, uh, you know, like I said, we got to see all the police reports, listen to all the interviews, the crime scene photos. Uh, the detective, Randall Slayton, that took the crime scene photos. Photos, you could tell there were no marks on his neck. Uh, you could see the smeared blood on his face where he'd been washed off. And they had changed his clothes. When his dad dropped him off, he had on a dark blue thermal shirt, jeans, and a pair of brown tennis shoes. In the crime scene photos, it shows him in a white short sleeve t-shirt. His belt is undone. His pants are undone. He has a pair of lace-up snake biter boots that come up to your knees, and they're unlaced all the way down. If he'd have been kicking around like Karen said, those boots would have come off his feet. Well, that almost makes me wonder if, if that's why um, they wouldn't let Aaron's dad ID him is because maybe at the time he was there, he was in the clothes that he arrived in and they needed time to change those clothes. Well, that, and I see that now that may very well, the shirt that he had on in the crime scene photo was not returned to us. Yeah. The one his dad dropped him off in was returned to us. But in this barn, it was had a dirt floor. Yeah, I see. If you, yeah. And that white shirt looked like it had been just pulled out of the pack and put on. It was so it was so white. There were no blood stains on it. Nothing. No dirt stains. Nothing. And now it was a shit. And if anybody looks at the picture, you know. What there was like a, a, a random wooden door laying on the ground, a bunch of leaves. Like it was a very, he would have been dirty. You know, he would, he would have been dirty for sure. Yeah. Well, and you know, if he would have climbed up the pole, like he had to, what, what country people call it, shimmying up poles because <laughs> there weren't any steps up the pole. He would have got that t-shirt filthy going yeah. up that pole from all the dust and stuff and uh, yeah if you look at it there yeah he would have had to lean over that beam just to just to tie that well, well see the way it was if you look at the pictures uh if you're facing into the building the pole he was climb had to climb would have been on your left yeah. so he had to go up get out step up on that top rail and remind, you know, he told her, you're going to watch this. Yes. Uh -huh. And he climbs up on that rail, climbs the pole, and she's still standing there. I can't accept that story. Like, I uh -uh. cannot accept no. that story. <laughs> and the thing is, she was high, blowed out of her mind. You're not supposed to interview a person until they've detoxed. They kept her in solitary by herself for days. A girl that was in jail with her said that they come in and got her every day. Two cops did, went in a cell with her and spent two hours with her. I have a theory of what they were doing, but uh, really? it ain't got nothing to do with sex. <laughs> no, I, 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 I have I, my theories. Uh, but, uh, you know that is that's that is speculation on my part, yeah. but the, the I mean there were several girls that said, you know, that uh, they turned her loose and had her call the funeral home and try to have him cremated. I've had call. I had mm -hmm. one conversation Crazy. where a guy actually threatened to have his body stolen and moved where I'd never be able to find it. So, uh, 
you know, there's, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's just so that. much on top of so much. It's not yeah. there. And, and see, I've saved all these conversations. I, every conversation I've had, uh, text messages, uh, I have every single text message between me and the detective. I have recorded calls between me and the detective. I have death threats. I have those recordings. Uh, the Anything that was in Messenger, I screenshotted entire conversations. Mm -hmm. I have it all. I've been doing it for, you know, 30 months and 16 days. The only thing that's going to count when it comes down to it is what you can prove. Yep, but see, their bungle, and their, I wouldn't have had a leg to stand on if they hadn't, have, if they hadn't have left that rope in that bloody hat. And every, their own physical evidence contradicts everything we were told. I mean, because of what you're dealing with, I'm glad that you have. But in a normal investigation, you should, you should shouldn't have none of have that. They should. <laughs> Exactly. So I mean, crazy. protocol, protocol, you know, when you have that, a lot of people on the scene, you're supposed to separate these people. They never separated them. Uh, two conversations were handwritten, which would have been my husband. And Hack Cox didn't even give a statement that night, but they wrote him one out, went to the door, had him sign it, come outside and sign it. And then they recorded Russell's and Crystal's. And they were led questions. They were yes and no. Well, he hung himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we love. Uh, how was your relationship with him? Stuff like that. Yeah. We all loved him. He was a good guy. Blah blah blah. Then but uh, you know, it would. So even if could, they, if he if what they said was true, let's just say for a second it was. Where are they now? Then they left that rope in there in in the garage. They just don't act like normal grieving this was an accident why do you call somebody and threaten them yes that's the big thing you I, and when they did these people say they love him they're his friends he then lived there, you, if, but none of them pay come to pay respects at visitation or his funeral none if that was the case then how were you at nine plus people there Exactly. And y'all just stood around and watched him do this and nobody intervened. It's just so crazy to me. It is. It With is. all that fighting and that commotion going on, nobody out of nine people, and she just watched it. I cannot accept that. Yep, and now see that you go back to all these people or users. Yeah. Uh, say three or four of them there were actually – sort of somewhat dealers and, and then they found out that and then when everybody found out there was a whole bunch of people there they switched it to oh well we had a party and then we just came out and found them yeah and see that's that you know that's where they they told my husband on the scene that only karen and aaron were there yeah. and then it wasn't three hours later they tell the tbi agents that there had been a big party and they come out and found him. So there's two stories the yeah. first night it happened. And then they're just like, whoop, suicide. Like, yeah. I just, ah, it's crazy. Well, you know, his daddy told him, he said, and his mama gets here, they's going to be hell on earth. So, but uh, yeah. I think I'm going to call in a night, yeah. young lady. Yeah. Uh, enjoyed talking to you again. Anytime you want to ask anything that you can think of, you're more than welcome to. If I can answer it, I will. I would much rather you go on here because you're going to be the one that knows better than anybody. Well, you know, pretty much, well, everything I've said, there's six parts. Yeah. If anybody wants a uh, um, broken down, that just her group is a wonderful story. That, that's the best place. It's run by you. You're his mother. You're going to be the best place for them to go. So I really encourage everybody to go check out her group. Uh, and, you know, in the other cases, uh, Sarah's and Sarah, uh, Lisa Gale Bose's case, her mom, 
her mom's was also road suicide. Uh, the same people are involved. And it happened within a mile of each other. But it was just, uh, you know, seven years earlier. Yeah. Oh, so I don't know. I have, I have a feeling there are more people out there. I am getting an influx of people from Texas. It just so happens to be everybody, you know, it's just crazy up there. It is. And then I pull up a thing the other night that Tennessee is the most corrupt state. I'm finding that out. Like, I, I had I, no idea. I'm going to, I was going to tell everybody after we, before we ended, like, you know, I'm getting a lot of people from Tennessee, but I will, I will take anybody. It just Tennessee, some real corrupt stuff up there. <laughs> well, from what I can see, and 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 again, here I'm not impartial. This is strictly my yeah. point of view. Uh, if you're in a position, it's sort of like the uh, haves and the have-nots. Uh, the have-nots. Are expendable. In Aaron's case, they yeah. didn't. Th they know we don't have the money to fight them. If I had the money, this would all done be over. But you know, I have to use what I have to fight my war. Uh, I, you know, this Tennessee's dark hole has brought in two weeks. Brought in twenty cases. Seventeen or eighteen of them are in this same district we have a young man that's missing joshua bohannon yeah. has been missing since the third of june been... and they will not even write a missing persons report uh because there's uh no indication that yeah. he's missing supposedly he's a type one diabetic my exactly. girl was a diabetic she was very into you can't tell me she went on a he went on a trip and didn't well no, i mean there was he some very far if that was the story, because there's yeah. and see, uh, they said there was no uh signs of foul play. It just and uh, I have all kinds of questions for that case. Oh, oh I, lord, I, if, if you're not kidding, I, and and you know, his aunt Vicky and his mom, mm -hmm. uh, they're Vicky, God bless her heart. You, you can tell it's taking a toll on her because. You know, when you're supposed to be grieving you can. and stuff and supposed to have answers that you don't have them, then it's it's different. You know, I the thing I had, and it's a shame, I hate to say this, uh, you know, when I when Aaron's sister come up got to the funeral home, I asked her, I said, Is that Aaron? Uh you know. But these these people have he's been gone since June the third. They have nothing, no idea but fear yeah. in them, you know, fear of what's coming. And it's like I mean uh they and one of these cases is actually told I think that, uh, that there was a, a drug history and they wasn't going to waste taxpayers' money. Yeah, which is ridiculous. It, it is. Anybody. Because I don't care. You know, addiction don't know no bounds. No. Uh, it don't know no economic cl class. It don't know race. It doesn't care how good of a heart you have. It doesn't care who you are. Uh, and, yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, we're all humans. Yes. Everybody makes mistakes that they wish they could change. But we all deserve the same treatment. And Josh's family have not received that. I mean, won't even file a missing person. I don't even report. think anybody's allowed to go search the area that he Oh, no, they don't want them to. Oh, yeah, they don't I want them to. They, th I have a theory. I mean, the Caitlin Ledbetter. They would not write a report for five days. They didn't search for seven days. Uh, then uh, it was, they tracked it back to 85, figured she got in the car with somebody and left. And then not too long ago, her dad's house conveniently burns with his girlfriend or somebody in the basement of the house burn up. And it would catch back on fire 
after they put it out and it'd been raining for days. Somebody wanted that house burnt plumb down. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just, and this is all in the same district. And, and you know, there's two, I don't know why the states or anybody else hadn't stopped to look at it. That area has the highest suicide rate in the state of Tennessee per capita. And when you go in to try to get into the 13th statistics through TBI or t uh, Tennessee.gov or st through vital statistics, you can't get nothing on the 13th district. Why not? Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering in all this, is there a way to profit from suicide? I do know. Well, I, I think that it's, in, in that case, you have a high traffic, you know, a good money making mess supply there. Then to me, it just sounds like that was more important than figuring out what happened to Aaron. They uh, profited it off of it. They are looking there the way they are. They have to have well, some stake in that family. Well, you know, too, you know, in Aaron's case, murder cases are very expensive. And then you stop and think about you might have nine or ten involved. Then you're talking, but these they're paid to do a job. The county has money it comes in. You know, they have money that funding that comes from su for suicide prevention. Where's that money going? Oh, yeah. Just and, you know, you've got property taxes that pay all their bills and all that. Why aren't you using it like you're supposed to be yeah. using it? Are your officers not trained good enough? And my pet peeve, one pet peeve here is, in Tennessee, you or me, if you have a high school education and no felonies, we can be a county medical examiner. And uh, when it gets to state level, you know, the, the police officers will write down, this is an apparent suicide, homicide, you know, whatever it is. And when it gets to state level, I don't care what kind of autopsy was ordered, they can get a third of the way through it and say, well, we're going along with this. That's where it stops. I don't care what was ordered. Now, Aaron, oh, they ordered a full cranium autopsy. We tried and tried to see where they had took his head apart. We could not find it. But you know, on his report, his weight was wrong. His height was wrong. They said he had emphysema. Aaron walked eight or ten miles a day every day. He had legs what, like you would not believe. I said something about a tear in a valve to his heart or something like that. And Aaron played basketball, always passed his physicals. You know, so it was like they'd done an autopsy on a body that wasn't my son. So, you know, the, but the thing about Tennessee's process, ME process, it is prime for abuse because it is a multiple choice system. You've got your questions, you've got four answers. If none of those four match, then you go, then they go back and they'll use for if one word and all that matches, that's what they go with, whether it applies or not. That's ridiculous. It is. And their system, the way it's set up, it is prime for abuse. Whether they get, you know, whether they're with a the body eight hours or whether they're with one 15 minutes, they get paid the same money. And mm -hmm. what we could tell Aaron, uh, was on the table 45 minutes. You know, his size, his weight, if two people had been there, it would have took them 45 minutes to have undressed him. It took longer than that to undress him and clean him up. So, I mean, there's a lot of problems in this. And I actually found uh, a TV, uh, MPT and PBS, done a special on Tennessee's medical examiner process. Oh, really? Yes. And at the end, they said they ruled that as high as 44% of Tennessee's ruled suicides 
were in fact not suicides. Why? I want to, yeah, I want to read. I want to look at that. What was that? Uh, M NPT and PBS. PBS, I believe, is public broadcasting system. Yeah. I can't remember what MPT stands for. And when, you know, my sister found it and had me go read it. And I'm sitting there with my mouth hanging open. But at the end of the day, whatever the police officer at the scene says, that's what they go along with. Yeah. And my thing yeah. with this is if you have an untrained, you have a trained police officer that is not trained in the medical field, but he's call, calling the cause of death at the scene, we don't need medical examiners. What the heck are they for? And, yeah, mean, other than to agree with something. And that's, I mean, that's what, the, that is exactly what this show said. Now, I don't know how old it is now, because Aaron's been gone nearly three years, so. Yeah, yeah. And we found this not too long afterwards, but I mean, if you dig long enough and hard enough, you can find information. I found last night that the 13th Judicial District 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 Attorney is the highest paid district attorney in the state of Tennessee. And his is sometimes two, three times high. His pay is higher than what they are in Nashville, Tennessee, the capital of Tennessee. He makes more than the D.A., in Memphis, Tennessee. You know, it's just, there's a lot of stuff uh, I don't understand and I won't pretend to. Right. Uh, that now, I don't know. And then you got everybody saying that uh, the, even cops that have left that jurisdiction say that it's a joke and uh, it's the most corrupt district in the Tennessee. So, Somebody knows something, obviously. We did, yeah. We just need one, you know, even if anybody was there that night and didn't plan on being there for something to go down, you know, there are places you can go way outside that. Yeah, because truthfully, I, I believe in my heart, if one of them went in there with guilt, guilt ridden and said, you know, I did it, I don't believe they'd take it. I don't believe they'd let them confess. No, in Tennessee? Uh, no, in, in that district. Yeah, oh no, yeah. I don't I don't think anywhere in Tennessee. I think you're going to have to try to go outside that whole state altogether. Um, I'm thinking so. Opinion. But you know, the, the little uh, Summer Wells case is uh, has drawn a lot of mm -hmm. bad attention to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then you've got all of this coming out beside, you know, and you've got uh, cases out of Benton County. We're talking out of to a few, Washington we have County. a few families lined up that are also from Tennessee that might be coming on and talking. I, uh, you know, I hope uh, I, I would ask, tell people to check out Tennessee's dark hole. Check out Justice yeah. Bowen and Shane Key. Uh, yeah, it's, it's beginning to be everybody's popping out saying, you know, I'm from Tennessee and it's just. I keep telling everybody we're not just taking cases from Tennessee. They just no. need have, they just have a real need up there right now. And if they want to all come popping out of the woodwork, I will. Well, there and you know, uh, when there was twenty that. popped up in that group in two weeks, it was shocking. But uh, you know, I know tons and tons more people that have called me, telling me what had happened to their loved ones. But at the end of the day, I can get get Aaron's case if I can get his, uh, you know, his death, uh, you know, his what's on his death certificate Dang. overturned. It still means, I mean, I can't talk with these people. They have to stand up and start fighting and asking the questions for themselves. Yes. You know, it, 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 and the go along to get along attitude has been along so long, you know, well, maybe... Uh, maybe things will change. Maybe it's not happening. It's not going to. You know, it's, I mean, all over the country, they're trying to take their freedoms. They're doing what they want to do. And no, you know, and I'm not saying all police officers are bad because they're not. I know a lot of yeah, really good ones. I made a post about that. Like, I know wonderful officers out there, but yes, the yes. ones that are doing this, 
slap them in the face and they should be offended and they should be saying something. But, uh, you know, the, like I said, Lisa, the Lisa Galbo, Sarah Huddleston's mother and Aaron's mo have most of the si exact same players. So close proximity. Caitlin Ledbetter went missing a mile from Aaron. Josh, 20 minute drive from Aaron. That's, that's the circle. The circle's big and ugly. But anyway, I'm going to call it a spotlight on them. I hope you do. I hope you do. And I hope more people, hope more people will decide to speak to you and yeah. uh, get their, you know, the only, you're the only, you're the victim's voice, the family that's left. That's the only voice they've got. And if you can't stand up and talk for them, then maybe they didn't matter as much as you say they did. It's scary. It is. I can't imagine yeah. how scary it is, especially in cases like this. It's scary. But you know that one, like I said, one person they may keep silent, even two, but they can't keep us all silent at the same time if we all start. And you know, I was talking earlier about karma. You know, it hit Crystal twice, real hard, fat, uh, real quick. Then, uh, Hat Cox died. Russell nearly cut his toes off. And this, I hate worse than anything in the world. The detective. Uh, passed away with COVID. He wasn't but 42 years old. And I went to school with his parents. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's obvious karma's coming at them. But I don't know if they can see it. And I, you know, like I said, I don't wish what we've been through. I anybody no, but I hope it eats in the back of their mind. Till they speak, till they say something. Uh, some people, I think they've done this drug so long. I don't think there's nothing left inside. Yeah. I th you know, I, I looked in Russell's, so. Russell's, yeah. I looked in Russell's eyes. He wasn't the man I, I knew. He was just, it's like a, like the lights is on, but nobody's home. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, I'm gone. Okay, I appreciate yeah, everybody yeah. listening. <laughs> yeah. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, let me know anytime you want to come on here. If you see me going on and talk about you, I will always send you the key for you to join. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Yes. Uh, I was so happy she popped on. I was talking to her right before here and I told her I will always send her a key if she wants to come on. I would much rather have these people on with me when I do this stuff. Um, so yeah, we have reached close to 9,000 people and we really need people to keep sharing and getting the word out. And like Lisa said, the more people that come forward, we're all, everybody's going to start to see a pattern here. And, uh, that's all we're trying to do is just bring awareness. Um, Yeah. Um, a few, I just wanted to recap. I went live earlier. I went to share it and I don't know how I deleted it. I run a lot of group pages or I help run a lot of group pages too. Um, Christina and I both, um, she is just going through some things right now medically. Um, and she is always messaging me how sorry she is. Um, she just deals with seizures and she doesn't think that's a good enough excuse to be able to sit down, but I keep telling her and I'm like, I'm telling you, just cause you guys see my face right now. Um, she is behind the scenes telling me she doesn't do enough. She is the one doing the comments. She is the one doing the sharing. She, we talk constantly. I am a very emotional person. I can, I just, I can relate to a lot of, of things. And she's kind of the one that's, uh, you know, you know, the factual person. We're a team. And uh, we started out in as admins in a group. And we just, I don't even think we realized how close we were getting. We just think alike. And, and uh, I just started letting her in. And we made a volcano group because there is a volcano happening on the La Palma Island off of Spain. And 
I just so happen to be on that side of the coast. So it's on day, I think, 36, 35 or 36 now. And it's way past the point where anybody thought it would be over. And yeah, so like if the theory of the tsunami would have happened, um, I may not have felt the water, but I will feel the effects. And I was joking around and said, I'm going to be the only one in America that knows about this. So I made a volcano group. So we have that group. Um, we have our grizzly group that we started for this group with, you know, our names together. Um, we, and I have my, a group that I, I just have for myself. Um, and I've seen that. And that, the only reason why I'm bringing them up is because I see that a lot of people are seeing the links and, and wanting to join. Um, and I've been letting them into every single group except for the Gray Heart group because that is just a, uh, I was a little unsure. And then I kind of started thinking like, you're asking all these people to trust you and share their most traumatic experience that they've ever been through. And you're shutting them out. And I just feel like a hypocrite. But I just need to warn everybody before I do. This is my personal diary. I was not done with it when I was done with it. I was then going to open it up to everybody. Um, and the reason why I'm so hesitant on it is it is a, a very gray area. And I'm a person that has always believed that the world is not black and white. I don't care how pretty it looks. I bet you if you talk to those people, they have a gray story in there somewhere. And it's just a safe place to after I'm done um, going through what I went through this year, um, I plan on opening it up for to make it everybody's diary. Um, I'm just a little hesitant because I would never want you to take what you see or hear in there and let it affect what we are doing on this page because these people are very, very, very brave and incredibly strong for doing this i go live in my little group my gray heart group right now there is only about 26 people in there and all of those people know me um person to person so i guess i i've just been praying and um he's just telling me you know this is what you made it for you may not be ready but um just we have rules um, for each group, according to each group, and we try not to let them overflow in, into the groups. Um, so I will, I just didn't want everybody to wonder why, why you're getting accepted into my um, scanner group. We run, we, we help at Mena scanner group. Sorry for the Gabby Petito case. Um, we, where I get all my mentoring, how I want to run my page, how I want to do any, any of this. I follow the team over at Unmasked. Um, I've watched these ladies since the Chris Watts case. They were one of the main groups in there. Um, and then it went left and had a little bit of a, a split and just the way she handled it with such grace and they have become a family and they are so transparent um, is what I really, really base my. So, yeah, I will never the all these groups and my gray heart group, especially um, has been amazing inspiration. And I will never, ever, ever be afraid to thank anybody that I consider an inspiration because that's why I'm here doing this now is because of all those lovely groups. So. I appreciate all of them. Um, so I will always send people their way because I wouldn't be here without them. So yeah, that's what I want to talk about. So I will let people in there um, that choose to find that. Uh, I haven't really been trying to, but if you want to, you will find it and just know it is very triggering and um, scary. 
but you know, what these ladies are and these families are going through is 10 times worse than the, any, anything I've gone through, but feelings. I know what it's like to feel so isolated and alone that you turn to the internet to uh, just find some comfort. So um, I know what it feels like to, yeah. And I think that's how we're gonna, we all, that's how we're gonna do this thing is connecting through feeling. You don't have to go through, but we know what it's like to feel some of the things that these people are feeling. And that's the way we are gonna connect. So um, all of these groups are wonderful. I love them. Um, I have so much love for them. I just wanted to turn it up a notch. Now, like the girls are at mass, they go into the courtrooms and they take notes and they keep all of us. They covered the Susan Morfill case, uh, the Chris Watts case. They just, they cover and they keep you really updated. I just want to do something different and I hope it starts a new way of doing two true crime groups. So, yeah. I thank you guys for watching. Um, please share, please debate. We want to talk about it. We want, we want everybody talking about this, um, to bring the awareness. I am so happy that you guys have reached that many people. Um, there's so much that we want to do. Um, like there's a, we run groups. I've never run a page. There's a boost button. You know, to me, I was saying earlier before I deleted myself, <clears throat> down in the corner with those ads where you see like, Hey, come buy my purse. I think it would be awesome to see one of, one of these, like Lisa's video down there where they can click and view that. And if I pay like $16 to this boost, they, it would do that and reach like more, potentially more people. And yeah, I want, I want to be able to do that out of pocket. Um, while everybody can um, donate to their, their GoFundMes or their organizations, I want to be able to do push it out as much as I can with, with without, yeah, so there's just so much we want to do. And uh, I hope it brings a lot of people. I'm, uh, if you go to my groups, the one thing you know is I'm a stickler for facts. Um, we had... A few of them that were just, uh, I don't know if anybody knows the baby in my case, but we had a girl reach out to us. So that was baby in my aunt and then their best friend. And then she wasn't. And then she was, and then we've heard, you know, we just finally heard like, please don't put this girl on. So trust me, like, we will make sure um, before, especially when it comes to like family divides, you know, we, we don't want to increase that. We just simply want to be, bring awareness and get the, the stories out there. We do not want to create any more rifts and family divide, anything like that. So if we ask for just, I mean, we're really just at that point clearing our conscience and saying, yes, we can put this person up there. And after it's done, we will not, we don't want to be known for that. So, um, no, we're not just taking people from Tennessee. Uh, we accept anybody, you know, make it a, make a appointment, a consultation. We'll do this privately with you, me and Christina. Um, and we will just go over some things and see what we, we can, if we can do that for you. So we have a booking I mean, that's just for a consultation privately, just to get to know each other, meet and greet. So we're not just hopping on here as strangers. I love that Lisa and I talked multiple times before we got on there because I'm, I'm very comfortable with her now. And I think we all just need to be there. So that's all that is. Um, I promise. And I would never do anything without anybody's permission. Like tonight I asked Lisa and she wanted to come on and I'm so happy that she did. So again, please share, share this one. If you're just hopping in, go um, read the post, go to her group, really, because that's where you're going to get the best source of information. So you have a good night. 
and um, we have been talking to a few families and I think that we will have maybe two coming up next week. So we want to get to the point where we, if we can, we will show somebody every night. So um, please reach out. Don't ever be afraid. Um, you guys have a wonderful night. And I just, I am just blown away. This is going exactly where I wanted it to go for Lisa. And that's a scary thing when, when you ask somebody to bring them on here and we can sit and talk all day, but it's you guys that are going to get the word out. So I really appreciate that. And I'm so, I'm that just, there are no words. I would love the end goal to be mainstream picks it up. Because me and little Christina will do everything we can, but we want, we want the big boys to pick them up. So the more you share, the more you click, the more you like, the more we talk, the more we discuss, the more we blow these stories out of the water. Um, I'm hoping that creates the attention. So you guys have a wonderful night and I thank you for watching.